So hey guys, I wanted to show you this relatively upscale Georgetown motorhome from Forest River. It's the Georgetown XL with the Ford V10. So this is a gas powered motorhome, but they've come a long way and a lot of people are opting for gas powered motorhomes, mainly because the reliability of the V10 engine that you get in them and not having to deal with many of the emissions requirements that are required on all modern diesel vehicles. So I think you're gonna be surprised to really see how far along these units have come and I hope you enjoy this video. Guys, I have to tell you, I really like the interior of this Georgetown model. This is different than many of the interiors you're gonna see on this type of Class A gas motorhome, mainly because you traditionally are gonna see this wall be a little bit shorter and a sofa in place that does not curve out this way. One thing I like about this setup is it gives you an actual L-shaped sofa to sit in versus just the traditional sofa or couch that doesn't have this extension. The dinette is pretty similar to most dinettes in these types of RVs where it slides down and it turns into a bed, but I really, really like the look of this L-shaped sofa in this particular model. Also the fact that they put a solid surface countertop in as well as a full residential fridge. And that's also kind of rare in this type of class A RV. The placement of the TV is really nice because it lets people who are sitting in the sofa area really have a good view of the TV without having to cock their head one way or another. This one also has a king size bed in the back, which is also relatively rare in a class A like this. Now there are so many class A gas and diesel motorhomes out there that you know you can probably find one in any floor plan you're looking for. But this was one of the first ones I walked into here. It's got really nice cabinetry work. But one of the things I like about it the most is they made really good use of the space in this particular one. In the master bathroom, porcelain toilet, dual vanities, and it's got a pretty nice shower too. It's got a reasonable size shower, and when you step into it, I'm five foot ten and a half, and my head goes to about this point here. So if you're in the six foot range, it might be a little bit short, but it's not bad at all. It's much bigger than many showers that come in Class A's. All in all, it's got a really nice size bathroom, especially with the dual vanities. I can really appreciate that. One thing that would have made this motorhome perfect is if it had whisper quiet AC units instead of this traditional type. A lot of people like to sleep with some noise in the room though, so you're definitely gonna get it with this traditional type AC, especially if you put it on blast mode where it essentially blasts all the air out here. It is a fully ducted system, which is nice. So it's gonna duct both AC units. This one has ducting here and all the way through the main cabin. And then the second AC unit, or you could call this one the first one, that one the second is up here. Again, these units get kind of noisy, so it would have been nice if they were whisper quiet units in this model. I'll tell you, it has a really nice floor plan. I really like it. I like the color of the Corian on the counters, and even the floor looks really nice. The dark wood accents it perfectly. So here is a really cool feature about this coach is that it has a second half bath in it which is really nice and it's very spacious too. It's not actually the size of many of them that you see in most motorhomes or RVs. So it gives you quite a bit of room. This is a nice unit. I'm always leery on class A's with huge windshields though because it just seems as if it's a target for rocks and it's gonna be extremely easy to chip or damage the front windshield in these things. And they are not cheap to replace. Another nice thing on this particular Class A is that the motor hump is much lower to the ground than on many units. So one of the benefits of a Class A diesel is that it's usually completely flat right here. So getting up to the front's easier, except for the step to go out the door on the passenger side. But on this particular model, I'd have to say there's a lot of room here and it's pretty easy to get up here and sit down as opposed to trying to crawl over some huge engine hump and transmission hump that's right here in the center. One of the downsides of a unit like this, of course, is gonna be engine noise. You are gonna hear more of the engine noise from the front because that's where the engine is. Diesel pushers are really nice because the engine's placed in the very back. So you eliminate a lot of that noise while you're driving down the road. 
and it's almost completely silent from the front while you're driving. Of course, pretty much all these Class A's are going to have electric steps that automatically retract when you close the door. Plus, when you get into this size, you're going to have 22 and a half inch wheels. Now, your wheels will probably be 8 lug wheels instead of the normal 10 lug that you might see on your larger diesel pushers. But you have a 255 2.5, which is generally going to be the, the same tire you see on many of your larger diesel pushers. Another nice thing about this particular unit is that it has a much larger chassis than some of the other gas engines that you see on the lot, mainly because the width of the front axle as well as the rear axle, they don't sink in too much, and that adds to the stability while you're driving it down the road. So when you have a wider wheelbase, it helps the side-to-side -side motion be a little bit more controlled when a truck passes by you on the interstate or highway. This one's nice because it has some braided valve stem extensions right here as well as curves this valve stem out towards you which makes it easier to inflate or deflate the tires as needed. One thing I would have liked is that they put a stabilizer here in the center to keep this thing from rattling around like this which it will do if you go over rough roads but it's not too difficult to add a rubber bushing or stabilizer in here to help prevent that from happening. The slide out on this side is a cable driven slide and one of the ways you can tell is because you see the cable here and it's going to be on both sides. And the super slide or the full body slide on the other side also is cable driven as well. You definitely want to make sure you keep this lubricated or at least maintained properly because if one of these cables breaks or if you have a problem with it, your slide will not either retract or extend properly. This unit's also equipped with the Cummins Onan 5500 watt generator. On a model this size, this 5500 watt generator should be able to power one AC unit and pretty much all the other appliances. I'm not 100% sure that I would trust this to run everything plus both AC units. And here's your black tank and your black tank flush. Here's your propane tank. Your Class A's are generally going to have massive propane tanks on board. And here's one of your side basement storages. This one's pretty large. I'd probably say it's two feet deep. It's probably about three and a half feet tall. And the overhead part right here, or the pass-through portion, is probably about nine or ten inches tall. It goes all the way to the other side, which is essentially a replica of this side. You could haul quite a bit in here. You'd probably want to limit your tables, chairs, and things like that that can fold to this top section, even though this bottom section can hold quite a bit. Another pass-through storage right here. Same height, same depth. Um, not quite as long, though. This one's probably about two feet long. And then here's your wet bay. All your flush fill city water connections, filter connections, and your outside shower. This one has all LED lights as well as a rear backup camera and a hitch. Maximum trailer weight on the hitch is 5,000 pounds. Maximum tongue weight is 500 pounds. Rear end has automatic stabilizers or leveling jacks on it as well. Kind of looking at the frame section. This area would be under the master bathroom and bedroom. This also has the outside TV and sound system, which is really nice. Looks like it's a 32 inch TV. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this short video on this Forest River Georgetown XL gas motorhome. This is the 369 model, 36.9 foot motorhome. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe.